Welcome to my channel, Let Your Imagination Take Flight. Today I'll be teaching you how to paint a winterberry scene on a piece of reclaimed wood. I had an 18 inch piece of an old fence board, which I painted white. You can use any craft paint, but I chose to use a paint sample from the Habitat Restore. I like using house paint as a base coat on old wood because I feel like it goes on easier and the paint is very cheap down at the Habitat Restore and it goes to a good cause. So just use your sponge brush and apply the base coat. It doesn't have to look good because we're going to sand a lot of it off. I like to sand the majority of the white off since this will be a snow scene and the wood color is a better contrast for that. Then wipe off your sawdust. Put on your palette, which in this case is my plate, the acrylic craft paint in the colors of black, dark brown, light brown, and white. The specific colors don't really matter, but I am partial to burnt umber for the dark brown. Before I paint on the board, I like to draw an outline of my board on a piece of paper and just place some lines like I think I want the branches to go, just to give me a general idea of the look I'm going for. Then I just freehand draw the main branches onto my board. You should use a pencil. I'm using a Sharpie just so you can see better. Don't worry about the tiny branches and little offshoots. You're just drawing in your main branches. Now with a number four flat brush, dip it into the dark brown paint. Practice on your paper following your branch lines. So pretend that the main part of the tree is off to the left. You want your branches thicker on that side and then thinning as they move to the right. Using the skinny side of your flat brush or what you might want to call the knife's edge, you start on the left side and with a little more pressure, you start moving towards the right, gradually lifting up on your brush to get a skinnier line. Continue to practice until you get a feel for how to go from thicker to thinner lines. And when you're ready, you can start painting over your branch lines on your board. Take it slow and easy. This video is sped up. I'm not actually painting this fast. Um, and this brush doesn't hold that much paint, so you'll need several long strokes to fill up the branch. Moisten your brush from time to time if the paint is not flowing well. You can remove any excess water by gently stroking the brush on a paper towel or your plate. I'm doing this painting with just three brushes, one sponge and a flat and a round brush. It's aimed at beginning artists on a budget or for people who may wanna have a friend or two over to have fun painting and they don't wanna spend a lot on supplies. When you're happy with your main branches, it's now time to start adding details and we're gonna use a number one round brush for that. We're gonna slightly mix the dark and the light browns together. Don't over mix, cause you'll want to be able to see both colors still along with the blend. Drag this mixture along the top half of the big branches. Use a slightly wobbly stroke so that the branch coloring will look rough and not smooth. This lighter brown will act as a highlight. I'm pretending that the sun is shining from above and to the right. So that's why I'm keeping the lighter brown towards the top of the branches. Any darker shading we do later will be from below and to the left. You may notice when I dip my round paintbrush into the paint, I give it a little twirl at the end and drag it out, and that puts a point at the tip of the brush, so it's easier to obtain those skinny lines. And remember, this kind of painting is not meant to be perfect, so just Take your time, have fun, and go with the flow. Add shading to the lower half of the branches with slightly mixed black and dark brown paint. If you ever mess up like I just accidentally did when I stuck my brush into the white paint, you can correct it before it dries by wiping it off with a moistened Q-tip. and just continue and finish off your shading. 
with very light strokes to make thin lines. Extend your fatter branches a little bit so they taper off by lifting your brush off as you're ending your stroke. Remember to be slightly wobbly and curvy like the branches are in real life. Next, add the branch buds. Use your number one round brush to make the small nodes coming off the branches. It's just the tiniest stroke from the side of your round brush. Make sure you alternate sides of the branch the nodes are coming off of just like in real life. Continue to add the nodes to all the big and medium sized branches and then continue on and keep adding your smaller branches with just a mixture of whichever paint colors you want until you're happy with how your branches look. Now it's time for the berries. We're going to use the bottom of the sponge brush to stamp the red berries. Now some sponge brush handles have bigger diameters than others and some are more oval. I chose a smaller handle. Put some red paint on your plate and dip the handle into it. Tap the excess off on the plate just to help coat the bottom of the handle all the way. Start applying berries wherever you think they should be. I put mine near the smaller branches and in areas that I felt like I messed up on. <laughs> Some of them were by themselves as a single berry, others were in groups of mostly odd numbers. You can do big clusters of berries if you'd like to or keep it more sparse. I just kind of put the color in areas where I thought it needed a pop of something. Once you have your berries how you like them, take your round brush and slightly mix some red and black paint together. Paint little curves with this shading mixture on the bottom left of the berries. And while it's still wet, carefully smear it with a Q-tip. I'm using a Q-tip instead of a mop brush to blend. So if you have a mop brush, feel free to use it. I'm just trying to reduce the number of paint brushes somebody would have to buy if they were to do this project. Repeat this in sections until all the berries are shaded. From time to time, you'll probably have to change out your Q-tip if it starts to get stringy. Now you need to let the berries dry. I left mine overnight but you can use a blow dryer to speed up the process if you're in a hurry. So after it's dry, it's time to add the snow. I put two dots of the same white paint and one dot of black on my palette, which today happens to be a leftover soda carton. I like to reuse things. So with your number one round brush, blend a little black into the middle white puddle. Blend well so you make a light whitish gray color. This will be our snow shading. Dab this onto the tops of the branches where the snow would stick to when it falls. So I'm dabbing and making wiggly strokes on top of the halves of the branches. You don't want any straight lines and you need to leave some spots on the branches without any snow also. Once you're done with that, it's time to clean your brush really well because the next step will be to add the bright white snow highlights. Using the white paint from the first puddle on your palette that has no black paint in it, you need to dip your round brush in and start dabbing and doing a wiggly stroke on top of the gray snow that was already on the branches. You need to leave some areas of the gray snow showing and also you can pile up a little bit of snow on areas where you think the snow might accumulate. Working in sections, start highlighting the right upper area on the berries with little dabs of white. And while the white paint is still wet on the branches and berries, sprinkle the ultra-fine glitter on the paint. 
I've had this glitter for a while, so I don't know the exact name of it, but it does look like it. it's an ultra-fine white glitter. And the glitter is perfectly optional. If you like your berry scenes without the snow glitter of the paint, or the glitter <laughs> in the paint, um, you can leave it out. Do small sections at a time so the paint doesn't dry out and the glitter will stick to it. When you think you have all your highlights done, then you need to stand the board up over a piece of paper and tap the board to get the extra glitter off. Afterwards, you're going to be pouring the extra glitter back into the glitter bottle. Now you'll be able to see any branches you've missed, so just check around and go back and add any extra highlighting paint and glitter as needed. Shake off that glitter and you're done. Now after it dries, you can seal it if you prefer. A sealant is not necessary, but it may help the glitter stay on better. If you do choose to use a sealant, definitely use a gloss one to help keep the glitter shiny. I used Rust-Oleum's Triple Thick Glaze on mine because it's non-yellowing and glossy. You can leave it on your shelf or you could add a hanger to it and put it on the wall. And it came out so cute, I think I'm gonna be painting it on some reclaimed wood boxes I just made a tutorial for. Thanks for watching. Please like or subscribe if you enjoyed this.